I've got a little baby seagull for company here. So I'm going to keep a weather eye out for him. I want to talk to you about the divisions caused by Brexit in our society and how those can be healed and about a nationwide project we're starting and how you can be part of that. I'm going to tell you how we've got to where we've got to and why we're talking about doing what we're doing. I'm going to tell you what it is I'm going to be doing. I'm going to tell you how you can be involved and I'm going to tell you where we've got to in the project and what's going to happen next. So let's talk about how I got here and why I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Well, first of all, a couple of years ago, I left my last job looking for another challenge. And uh, it was like God had said that assignment's completed and now we're moving on to the next assignment. In that time, I've had a load of prophetic words given to me and also obviously an inner conviction of the Holy Spirit and a, a few other things I've done. But also, I was looking at the, the lives of the prophets in the Bible and some of the weird stuff they did. So if you think about Ezekiel, he, he lay on his side for, for, well, before he lay on his side, he, he made this um, model of the city and he put a steel sort of shield between him and it. And he lay on his side for 390 days for the sin of Israel. And then he lay on his side for 40 days for the sin of Judah. And then people came and bound him in ropes and stuff like that. And he was cooking, well, he was baking bread using human excrement for fuel. That was the kind of sign. And the prophet Isaiah, well, you know what he did? He walked around naked for three years and barefoot. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be doing that for sure. And I'm definitely not lying outside cities and stuff like that on my side for, you know, 430 days. But I'm going to be doing something else. I, I was compelled to make a sign outside Parliament when I went and stood with a sign and uh, wrote all the MPs about the divisions that were being caused by Brexit. And I got a reply from some of them. Also sent a letter, well, took a letter to the Archbishop of Canterbury and telling him uh, about what I believe God was saying to me. And he wrote back, uh, well, his, his press secretary did, and or his correspondence secretary did. And it was good, it was a really nice letter. Um, so that got on the ITV News, and I don't know if you saw that or not, but he has a clip for you to watch right now, just very quickly. It takes a brave man to go to London with a placard like that, stand amongst all the activists and try and get your message across. Why should we be nice to our MPs? The country is in a mess. They get it wrong sometimes and sometimes they get it right. And I think there's a, a golden rule, isn't there, which is treat other people as you would want to be treat yourself. There must be a sense of what have we become? We've reduced ourselves to a trade deal. Yeah, that, that is what, what it seems to be all about. But I've emailed every single MP in Parliament before I went down and I said to them, look, um, our strength and identity as a nation isn't defined by trade deals. It's defined by our character, how we treat our elderly, how we treat our sick people, how we educate our children, you know, how we obey the rule of law. We mustn't lose that sense of who we are as a nation, we're good. Do you remember the shootings at the mosque in New Zealand? The day that happened, I was compelled by the love of Christ to go and make a stand in, outside a mosque and just say, you know, this isn't okay to do this. So I did that and you might remember that that got in the local paper and I was on BBC radio with a, a Muslim guy as well. So here's a quick reminder of what happened there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to go to all the 69 cities in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And I'm going to pray for people and I'm going to see what God does. But I'm also going to ask them to do these three things that I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to ask them to be forgiving to one another and to be merciful to one another and 
to be kind to one another. So I'm gonna ask people to be kind, merciful, and forgiving. So what I'm gonna do before I go to each city is I'm gonna to write to the local government there and see if they wanna join in. I'm gonna show them the stuff I did outside the mosque and outside parliament and the stuff that was on the telly and the radio and just see if they wanna join in with that. I'll be telling the press as well that I'm doing that and I'll be telling some local churches before I go. Throughout the 69 city tour, I'm gonna to be asking God, I'm gonna be seeking God for one, at least one, bona fide and indisputable and verifiable miracle. I really do need your help and I, I really do want you to come on this journey with me together. I want it to be us together doing this. And there are at least five ways that you can be involved and help out. The first thing you can do is you could be part of the official project prayer team, the Three Things Project Prayer Team, praying for the things we're doing every day and praying for the team as we move from city to city. And if you want to do that and you know me, just send me a message somehow. There's all kinds of links below that you can do that with. The second thing is that from wherever you are, whether you're at home or wherever you are, you can join me in praying for whatever city I'm in on a given day. The third thing is this. I'm a firm believer in letting God's people know when there's a need so they can come together and meet that need. And obviously there are going to be expenses involved in this. And right now we don't even have a car because mine just got scrapped. So we are in need of like some kind of estate car or a camper van would be better. And there'll be ongoing expenses during the project. And if you want to get involved in that, there will be a website and you'll be able to do that on there. It's not there yet, but it will be. And, you know, if you've got a camper van or an estate car that you fancy giving us or, or lending us for several months, then that would be great. You know, we'll have a saying up here in the north is chai bends getting out. So it means, well, I won't explain what it means, but basically, I can't be shy about this. We do need a vehicle to get round. If you've got one, it'd be great if you could facilitate that for us. The fourth thing is we need help with social media and websites and graphics and that kind of thing. So if you're good at that stuff and you know me and you want to volunteer your time to do it, then just get in touch. You can message me or use some of the links below to get in touch. What I'll also be doing is there are some people that I know that I'll show you this film and I'll be asking you if you can help out. But don't let that stop you getting in touch. The fifth thing you can do is really simple, but it's really massively effective. I'll be putting blogs on and vlogs on and all that kind of stuff. If you can share and like and comment and subscribe to stuff that's on social media, you know, on, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, all that kind of stuff. It forces the social media companies to look at that stuff and share it more widely. And that would be really helpful. So if you can do even that, that would be fantastic. So where we've got to in the project so far is I've got four really good advisors. Two are senior pastors in churches. One's a world famous worship leader and one's a internationally internationally renowned professor and Bible teacher and he's also a bit prophetic. The two of those guys are taking a more hands-on approach than the other two which is fair enough but those are the ones I've got. I've also been talking to my local church past I've joined a local church here where I live but I'm keeping that a bit incognito because I want this to remain interdenominational and non-denominational. I don't really want this to get all kind of grounded in one denomination or the other. And he's fine with that. So I'm just gonna be sitting in the midst of them for a while here where I live. We've got the three things, website, URL, the, the domain bought and a few other things. Um, my wife's been recruited to handle all the prayer requests and transmit to those people who'll be praying. 
and we've got one or two people on the prayer team on the project prayer team so far what we haven't got is a vehicle and that's what we need more than anything else so i'll be setting up those teams i'll be setting up the the website and i'll be getting people involved in that and once we've got all that stuff there's nothing stopping us getting on with it because this is the advantage it's me on my own but it's also all the people looking in who are joining in in prayer because that's what it's really about <laughs> so here's a summary of what, getting attacked by seagulls here's a summary of what you need to know God's brought us to this place somehow through the mist of the last two and a half years what's emerged is this project and so that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be visiting the 69 cities in the UK we're going to be praying for people we're going to be talking to local government about that and we're going to be you know making a prophetic sign and we're going to be encouraging people to do three things be merciful be kind and be forgiving you can join in in all the ways I've said particularly by praying through praying for the team or praying for the cities that I'm going to or by joining in financially or through your skills and abilities that you can volunteer and you can join in by sharing on social media so the word gets out where we've got to is we've got a bunch of stuff done but we really need to get going with some of the other things and effectively apart from the the very practical things like websites and that kind of thing which are relatively easy to do i think what we need more than anything else is this vehicle so if there's anything you can do to help with that then please do in the meantime it's the hottest day ever recorded in the united kingdom i need to get out of this sun so i'm gonna have to walk i'll see you later <laughs>